All right, this is the second ta- second week of our genotyping workshop. Today we'll be continuing with the genotype file structures and maybe get a little bit to editing those files at the end. Um, so where we left off last week, we were looking at join map file formats. Um, and just to refresher, those files include a header at the top that includes a name for your population, the population type, which is cross-pollinated in our case, the number of markers or the number of loci label, um, which was 399 in this file, and the number of individuals, uh, which are the columns, and that was 143 in this file. We talked about that the first column is the marker name, the second column is the segregation type, and those segregation types use different letters to describe different um, segregations, such as segregating in both parents or segregating in one parent with three, four, or two alleles. Um, We covered phasing a little bit. And I also talked about how in a tab delimited format, join map files, this is exactly the same file pretty much as this file. This is just displayed in Excel, while this one is displayed in a text document. We still have all the same information. The first line is the marker name, segregation type, phasing, and all the genotypes, um, and so on for the rest of those. So next up is GBS genotype files. Um, GBS can be formatted similarly to join map SSR data, um, and that type of format that is similar is called HapMap format. Um, But instead of using the genotype codes that we had discussed previously, such as A, B, C, D, E, F, E, G, N, 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 P, H, K, H, K, and so forth, um, we just use the true nucleotide codes. Since there are four different nucleotides that can be displayed in the file, um, A, T, C, G, generally GBS data is only biallelic though, so we only have um, these three segregation types, um, LM, LL, and NNP, and HKHK, to describe them in join map file terms, although it would just be two nucleotides in the place of these other letters. Um, I don't know if there's anything, any questions? Um, yeah, why again, in this particular format, is it LM, NP, and HK, why do they have to be those three? I was just, um, because these three formats describe biallelic um, markers, and so LMLL is always used to describe a biallelic marker that's segregating in the first parent, so Norton would be segregating. So they just use different letters. Yeah, and And NNP always describes a biallelic only segregating in Cabernet Sauvignon, and HKHK always describes the biallelic segregating in both of the parents. Um, and that's these, where the software does it. Yeah, the, these codes aren't used in HapMap format. Um, I'm just using them as an example since you guys oh, oh. understand yep. um, those formats at this point in um, the workshop. So to look at an example, this is what the HapMap file looks like displayed in Excel. Again, the first column, we no longer have a header, so there's no header information needed. Um, Instead, the first column is still the marker names, and GBS markers are always displayed as um, the chromosome number. So this would be all of these markers listed here would have aligned to chromosome one on the Pinoir reference genome. Um, And then there's an underscore to separate the chromosome from the physical position in base pairs. So for example, this marker would have aligned to position uh, 96,586, so pretty close to the beginning on uh, the reference genome. And then those markers ascend from there. This is only the very first. James and John, we use line, we try to use line. Oh, hey. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, to say something. Yeah. Welcome. Can you hear us? All right. Okay, perfect. Um, 
We just did a little review and now we're starting with um, the GBS marker data. Um, this data can be displayed a little bit similarly to how SSR marker data is displayed in JoinMap. Um, but instead we use nucleotide codes instead of just the, the replacement of the letters um, A through, what is it, P. Um, and on the bottom here is a hat map file displayed in uh, Excel. And so in this format, we first have the marker names displayed in the first column. And these marker names are written as uh, first the chromosome is this one. Um, and that means these markers were aligned to the chromosome one on the PNOIR reference genome. And then the underscore separates the chromosome number from the physical position in base pairs. So the first marker was aligned very close to the beginning of chromosome one at 93,586 base pairs. Uh, and these markers ascend from that point. <clears throat> so in the second column is the alleles that are segregating. This is a little similar in the sense to the segregation um, column in the previous file type. This just tells us which two alleles are segregating. It doesn't tell us anything about um, how that structure is in the parent. We just know that these loci are biallelic. Um, and in the case that we wouldn't have the naming nomenclature that was as straightforward as we do for GBS markers. It also includes the chromosome number and the physical position. Uh, so as you can see, those are exactly the same as the name, but these are the columns that um, different softwares reference when they're trying to utilize uh, the chromosome and physical position uh, for various tasks. Um, Strand through this QC code, these are all not um, important for our uses. <clears throat> all of the, this whole strand column is all just pluses. So it could be plus, I think the alternative version that it could be is a minus, um, but we don't change any of that information. And all of these, the assembly number center, prot list, assay list, LSID, panel LSID. Um, QC code, those are all NA for all of the file types. If we were doing something more preliminary with this data, there might be information that comes off of the sequencer for these columns, but they're not important for us, so they're just left as NAs. So then looking at these first two individual columns, um, after the QC code is the first individual. Um, and I had, I rearranged a little bit so the parents are first. Instead of, having, instead of having a column that tells us which parents it's segregating in, we have to look at it and actually um, look at the both of the parents to understand that segregation type. But since there's only three types for GBS, pretty much, um, it's fairly straightforward. Cabernet Sauvignon uh, segregates at this first marker with CT, and Norton segregates with TT. If we look at the progeny, we see the possible combinations between that. It could be heterozygous CT or homozygous TT. Um, and I think most of them, like the second marker, it segregates in Norton, the same thing. Um, it's just uses the different um, nucleotides because these aren't reformatting the data at all. These are the actual genotypes um, represented at that position. Um, and then the third one is uh, segregating, oops, is segregating in both of the parents, CTCT. CT. Um, and we see a few of the possible combinations uh, from them. Any questions this far? Okay. Um, for example, this file that I showed here was a HapMap diploid format, and that looks the closest um, to JoinMap in the sense that we have names and then we have genotypes in columns for every individual. The marker loci are displayed on the very first column, and we go across the row to track one of those. Um, 
more, to, more typically, we use just a HapMap um, file, which uses IPAC codes instead of the two alleles. Um, they represent the same data. We just have a single letter for each genotype instead of um, two letters for each genotype. And in Excel, there's a code, not Excel, in Tassel, but there's a key for what these mean. And so the first four, A, C, G, and T, just mean um, that that individual is heterozygous for that uh, nucleotide. And then the, he sorry, what? Or homozygous, sorry. Um, and then the four next are Y, S, and W are different um, combinations, or I guess through M, are different combinations of those four alleles. And so for example, R represents um, a genotype of A, G, C, or Y is C, T, and so on. Um, it's just another method of simplifying the data, but it, it represents the same data that we saw um, in this diploid half map file. So normally we wouldn't see the, uh, Oh, I see it. Never mind. So, so, so for, <clears throat> for example, go, go back to the this one. Okay, so this one. So, all one, all two, and all three for the first marker CT, CT, and CT. Mm -hmm. How do you want to put the uh, You so, so, so TG is the homozygote, right? So, so where is your, yep. This here. Yeah, mm -hmm. so TG, is that the first one is D? Yeah, this one and this last one, one is T. The second one is whatever. This is Y, y because Y, y is CT. Yep. yep. I think that normally, because if this is a true hybrid, the rate of it, they should be following a parent, but the sequence all will pop out of different from the parents when they stick in the whole signal. Yeah, that's the thing with GBS data. There's, there can be quite a bit of um, misgenotyping, such as underrepresentation of heterozygotes or just like missing stuff. So sometimes um, in filtering, you have to try to evaluate whether the percentages that you get for each allele are representative of um, the two parent genotypes. Like, for example, let's see, um, one of these in here, AR, AR. If we had a marker that had like, let's see, this could be a R, R, A, R. Um, if there was, if in the progeny, 50% of all of the markers um, had an A, Contained at, least, contained at least one A, and 50% of the markers contain, I guess I'm saying that's wrong. G. Um, yeah, G. If the marker percentages were 50% A and 50% G, it would be fairly unlikely that this, um, parents. the parents were actually hey. homozygous um, in Cabernet Sauvignon and heterozygous in Norton. So would you take it, the it would be more likely G. for GBS data what I have done in the past, you don't have to do it this way, but if it didn't seem to match the parents, I wouldn't use it because then I knew I couldn't trust the parent data. Um, so in that case, you're gonna filter them out. Right? Yeah, I would filter them out. Which GBS data generates a lot of markers, uh, so we can afford to filter stuff that doesn't look right. Um, and it's often better to filter stuff that doesn't look right. How many percent do you allow them to stay? This is his whole rival. If, if that parent is a homo rival and the parent is like a deep case, if they feel 50 50, we'll figure it out. But would you give them some room? What I've done in the past um, is I would filter all of the parent markers into their various segregation types. So I would have all of the LM, LL markers in a file, all of the HK, HK, all of the NNNP. And then for like single parent segregating, I would set maybe, um, it, it would be acceptable from like, because for that type of marker, for one parent segregating, one parent not, you would expect a segregation pattern of 75% of the dominant allele and 25% of the minor allele. Um, 
and I would find it acceptable between like for the major allele like 85 percent maybe um down to probably like 65 I think I usually give like a 10 percent um buffer for and those files they, they, they think the parents not only one copy yeah they do I think six copies of the yeah. parents so you see um, if they assign pointers what is case if they assign a is anyone a or like even parents show a and b 50 50 percent and they are willing to find a you know something sometimes it happens like if they are six sample mm -hmm. and they give three a three g and they that assign parents a and therefore we see d i mean we see d on the yeah i'm not 100 percent sure with the um parent genotyping what the list is except like how much Thank replicates you. you have to have before you assign a heterozygote heterozygous genotype um i don't know if i've ever actually read that in the methods um but for the map when you encoded it if you encoding this uh you give the 20 15 percent 10 percent up and 10 percent down about and even if even if that parent genotype is correct, uh -huh. um, that means we have some fairly significant segregation distortion um, in the progeny if if those genotypes actually are correct. So I would still think it'd be okay to filter those out. Yeah. Go back to this one. See, see the So, so why all three got a lot of N N N values are normal? Yeah, that's a good point. N N represents like no data, um, and that's either the data that they got wasn't enough um, to meet their thresholds for including it, or it was messed up for some reason. Um, it just means that there's no no good data available well, maybe at that. Yeah, and it's a double end. So for neither parent or for these are not phased. Um, so if there's no information, it doesn't because this is an individual. It doesn't use it at this stage. We have not used any of the parent information um, for progeny purposes. There's been no phasing or anything like that. Uh, so if we didn't get a genotype at a loci for an individual. Um, it's just blank. We don't get information from one parent or the other. It's not divided. Um, we have to use a sequencing error or something? Yeah, most likely a sequencing error. See, because, because you can see OO1, OO2, there are no ends. Ends means there are no one, right? Yeah, and which. OO3 got a lot. So, um, there might be more down farther because this is just a very small snippet of chromosome one like what is this like 15 markers or something um i think uh jason pop they one possibility because the core got dna is good mm -hmm. so we have experienced some progeny actually the whole marker get an, an, so that's the question we had three there we are some yeah. that have we had, bad genes i think we had um, three uh you know type of previously one forty nine one fifty six. It just everything, and I think of one top three because the DNA quality not reaching a good uh, status. Mm -hmm. So, or they have failed. Yeah, that's for sure a possibility. Um, and say if this pattern continued with a lot of missing for individual three, um, that's a step that we do in filtering. If it's missing more than, I'm not sure exactly what I set it on on GBS. Probably definitely more than 50% of the data, we would filter that individual out and not, not use it. So for this kind of thing, if the whole genome type, you cannot use anything to so even just create them for mm -hmm. that structure, right? Yeah. And which we use lower filtering on individuals versus markers because we don't want to prematurely remove individuals if we don't have to. Um, but markers are fine to filter um, if there's even, it seems like there's a little bit something wrong with it. Um, anything else? I don't know. Okay. This is that same file in just a tab delimited format, which 
is in like which is its true file format we don't um, use this file uh, with an excel um, like the extension uh, excel or hat map formats are the file name dot hat hmp dot txt um, so it's tapped eliminated uh, but again it's all the same information from here to i think about here are is the first row um, this would be the second row containing the first genotyping information for the first marker. Um, I will point out in this file, there's an S0, and you'd think there's no chromosome zero. Um, but in these file formats, zero just means it's not, it wasn't able to be aligned, um, or it was aligned to a segment that hasn't been aligned in the context of um, the larger genome. It just means the physical position isn't certain at this point. Um, okay, and then that was all HapMap file format. Another format that GBS data uses, um, and it's more common for the software to take it, is a VCF file or variant call format. Um, and I discussed HapMap format first, first because it's more similar to JoinMap um, in its structure than VCF, but also because it's very difficult to edit VCF files um, without using uh, software like Tassel. And sometimes it's easier just to manipulate stuff um, manually. And so very often, um, will a person convert between VCF and HapMap um, just to do some editing steps. And so this is an example of VC, a VCF file opened in Excel. Um, and you might notice in the middle here, it looks kind of funny that there is some zero slash ones or zero slash zero, zero slash ones. So then there's like January zero zero. And this is one of the reasons why you don't want to edit a VCF file because Excel will reformat um, some of these genotype codes as dates. Uh, since I'm pretty sure this one was like a one slash zero. And then there's also, there should be another example. One slash Jan is a one one. Um, and so it's almost impossible to go through and make sure all of these are correct. Uh, which is why it's really inadvisable to open a VCF file in Excel and try to mess with it. Uh, okay, so going through this actual file format, all of this stuff with a pound sign in the front um, is just like note information. So first it describes the file format, which is a VCF version 4.0. That's just the, the version of the software that was used. Um, tassel ID, which you don't have to know exactly what all of this stuff means. Um, it's just information uh, for this software. And if people who understand more of this can probably use it for some of their troubleshooting. But um, going down to this row right here is the first stuff that we want to look at. Once again, uh, the columns look a little bit similar to the hat map format. Uh, but instead, we have the chromosome number and the position first instead of the ID. So chromosome zero, and then we can see one starting down at the bottom here, the physical positions and base pairs, and then the IDs, which are exactly the same as what we saw in, in HapMap. And instead of having one column um, that has the two different nucleotides that are being used in this marker, you have quote unquote, a reference, a reference allele, which is the major allele or the allele that occurs 50% or more of the time. And you have the alternative allele, <clears throat> which is the minor allele, which occurs 50% or less of the time. Um, these three or these three columns are some of that like not important stuff. Um, quality, it just has a dot all the way down or and then filter, it all passes um, because this has been already like quality checked and whatnot. And then <clears throat> information, again, just a dot down the line. Um, and then I believe the format. And if you're unsure of something like this, you can go up and see, okay, we're in format. 
these ones say format. Um, we have format GT, format ID, GT, number or description. Okay, that's the genotype. So that's just saying that fo the information following um, in this row is a genotype um, information. And so going across um, BCF files uses the zeros and ones um, in the actual genotypes instead of the actual allele or oh, an actual nucleotides. So for, for me, it seems that it's just happening. This, this session or GT or DT, there are some risks. This people. does not mean um, the genotype. No, it doesn't mean that. It means that this format, the format following um, is this GT ID. And GT just means genotype. If in this column it would have been an 80, it should have been including allele depths um, or so on, like whatever, so whatever's in this column means um, one of these. So that REF and ALT, is that the real base pair? Yeah. For this? Yeah. For so each allele. This one actually is the CNT. Right. So that's yeah. what you say for many, not a genotype. It's got a well, term. Well, man, it's the genotyping. It means GT. Everything is the same. If it's happening GT, one of the uh, DNA codes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's true. And the zeros and ones, which I don't actually go in and look at BCF files a lot. It's fairly unusual to even like open them up in Excel. Um, but the zeros and ones are just describing whether it's the reference or alternative um, genotypes. Uh, and so zero, zero would be headers, I guess, I think. We could probably go look and look at our hat map format. Um, a C. So it means zero, zero is heterozygous for the reference allele or the major allele. One, one would be heterozygous for the alternative. Zero slash one would be Headers, I guess, for CT. Um, is there anything, any questions about what this looks? Otherwise, we'll go to the delimited format. Um, again, all of this stuff, it's the same file. Um, it's just open tab delimited. And so we get rid of some of that formatting stuff that Excel does in the genotypes. I guess, additionally, um, NAs or like missing genotype information is represented as this um, dot slash dot um, instead in BCF format. I think that's all. Okay. And so editing these files, um, usually a lot of changes um, or a lot of filtering can be done in the program tassel. Uh, and that just makes it, that program also allows us to easily like upload a hat map file and save it as a VCF file or vice versa. <laughs> so you can change between file types pretty easily. Um, Tassel is also useful for some filtering and stuff, but we'll get into that later. This is what um, a GBS file looks like open in Tassel. It's a lot easier to read. Um, and so again, it uses the IEPAC codes listed over on the left side of the window. And also Tassel does some nice stuff as far as coloring. So all of these yellow, um, all of the yellow boxes, I believe are the major alleles or headers, I guess, for the major alleles. The green boxes are headers, I guess. Um, so it has both the major and the minor allele whereas the blue boxes are homozygous for the minor allele. Um, and white boxes are missing data. Uh, also, okay, let's see. I don't think. On the top here, I'll point out that this first number, and it's probably kind of hard to read, but this first number, say in this very first column, is uh, 2135. That just means it's marker, it occurs, it's the 2135th occurring marker. Um, but this after the semicolon, where's my marker on the mouse? After the semicolon is the physical position. 
And you can also change this um, actually in the actually in the program. You can change it to read some other stuff too. But that is, and you can scroll this slider um, to view more of the markers. Okay, and so ramp seek markers um, are last marker type. Let's see. Um, and those markers can also, just like VCF or just like GBS data, it can be coded in VCF files or hat map file formats. But instead of um, the genotypes actually representing the nucleotides at that position or at that loci, it whoops, recodes it recodes the um, genotypes into like a pseudo VCF is what it's called. So it'll look exactly like GBS data, but an AT genotype, for example, does not mean at that physical position there is either an A allele or a T allele. Um, it represents a more complex haplotype block, um, which we discussed that last week, but we'll look at exactly what um, that looks like in a ramp seek file in just a minute. RAMP-seq data is multi-allelic, so there can be anywhere from two to four alleles. It just depends on um, how much polymorphism is within that haplotype block region. Okay, so since RAMP-seq data is a little more complex than um, GBS data, there are a number of different files that we can open um, that are associated with the genotypes. And these are all located in our like ramp seed genotype folder um, of data. And so it's not hard to like locate all of these. But first of all, we have a .vcf file. Um, and so for our case, it could be like Norton cross Cabernet Sauvignon .vcf or something to that effect. Uh, and that would just stay the same for anything that has this bracket family type um, file format. And this is the actual like genotype file that is in a pseudo VCF format. This is the VCF file that can be used for later um, linkage map construction. But in order to understand what that um, what data is in that file, we have to look at some others. Uh, this family name dot VCF um, dot allele lookup dot text is a table that we can go to to look up what the nucleotides actually mean. Um, and so what the A, C, G, or T alleles represent. Um, and that'll give us the haplotype ID of what that allele means. Um, and so once we have that number, uh, and we'll go through an example shortly if this isn't making sense. Um, once we have that haplotype number, we can go into this third file that is haplotype allele.fasta. Um, and the FASTA file contains the actual sequence for the haplotype allele. So if we have haplotype number two um, that we find in the second file, we can go into the third file and find the one that says two and then look and see what the actual haplotype is. Um, again, half dot hap underscore genotype um, is pretty much the information contained within um, from some of the sequencing stuff. And so it tells us things like uh, whether it's heterozygous or and what the sequencing depth is. So if we see a genotype that we're not sure if it's correct, we can go in there and look at what the depth is and kind of ascertain how much certainty there is um, for that genotype being true. And then finally, half underscore genotype underscore matrix, that's the same information contained in this half underscore genotype file. Uh, it's just uh, transposed so that the rows are columns and the columns are rows. Okay, so I will go to the PDF file. Um, all that stuff that I was describing, um, there is a PDF file that says the same stuff within the folder that has the genotype files. Um, and there's a, there's a few more files within that. Some of the stuff goes along with linkage mapping, which we'll talk about later, like this pedigree file. 
Um, and there's some QC files and stuff. Um, but there, there is a PDF that describes a lot of this data um, found alongside. Okay, oops. Let's see. Okay, we looked at the PDF. Now we're gonna look at an example of the ramp seek stuff. And that's showing up on there. Okay, so we have, first of all, let me zoom in a little bit. No, um, it stays. Okay, so looking at the VCF file, we looked at one of these earlier, and all I've done is transposed. So instead of this first column, um, this would be a row across the top of the VCF file, um, and this would be the second row. I just displayed it, I transposed it so it'd be easier to read. Um, but all the information we need from this uh, is the pseudo VCF genotype. So for example, if at this ramp seek chromosome one number 1170 uh, marker, that's the name. And these are coded the same as GBS. It just includes an RH underscore at the front. So we have chromosome, then physical position for naming. <clears throat> this marker is segregating with four alleles, so it's heterozygous in both parents. And then we have the physical position again. Um, but if we want to follow this individual throughout the different files that we discussed, um, if we remember that this one is GT, we can go and look up exactly what that GT genotype means. Okay, so the second file is the .vcf .allele lookup. We look, we had a GT genotype for that first individual at this marker. So these are the four different genotypes uh, or four different alleles which are possible at this genotype. And they represent haplotype IDs 8, 1, 21, and 4. The reason that this isn't just 1 through 4 is because these ramp seek markers have genotypes um, for pretty much every different species that exists within the Venus, uh, Avetus genus. Um, and so the four haplotypes in our population might be number like there are there might be genotypes that exist one through 21. Um, and these are just the ones that are present in our population. So it means the A is then they happen into the your core family or what? The A one twenty one four where does it come from? Okay, so I'm just saying that these haplotype IDs. Um, their IDs. Yeah, their IDs for this information, which I'll talk about. Um, yeah, because these are multi allelic. So when it says allele A or allele C, just like for SSR markers, how in like a vinifera cross, we might not have the same numbers um, as what the numbers are in our population. Like there is a large number of different haplotypes that can occur. So there might be 21 different haplotypes across the Venus, Venus genus. Um, and these are just the four haplotypes that occur in our population, um, or the four most dominant that occur in our population. And so at that first individual, we had the genotype GT. And so we'll want to look up the haplotypes 21 and haplotype 4 in the next file. <clears throat> and so the next file is the haplotype allele.fasta. Um, and we want 21 and 4. So here's 8. Here's 1. Um, and these are 21 and 4. And so these look very similar. It's pretty hard to distinguish what is different um, just by looking at it. So I've gone in and done a comparison of the two sequences. So haplotype 21 is the top line and haplotype 4 is the bottom line. Um, and all of these are exactly the same up until the end of this sequence. And 21 has an A at this position, while 4 has a G at this position. And then down here, 
Um, the opposite is true. There's a G for 21 and an A for four. So those are the differences that are represented when in the pseudo VCF file, we just have a G and a T. Um, it actually means that this sequence or this haplotype sequence is present for 21 and this haplotype sequence is present for four. Do you guys have any questions about that? Oh, and then I will also say um, for the hap underscore genotype file, we can see that in this population um, for haplotype eight, um, that would be our quote unquote major allele because 27% um, of the individual, 27% is the incidence rate for this haplotype, whereas one has 22, um, 21 has 20% occurrence, and four has 18% occurrence. We do see really low percentages for seven and 53. These are probably um, genotyping errors that occurred. And so I think it's pretty standard to filter anything under, I think, 1% um, for these files as just being misgenotyping data. Okay, so Connie's here. I asked her about that. Can you scroll zoom a little bit? Up. Up, 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 up. All right. Okay, here. So the AC allele, A and 1, is there no difference? Or why you change the T and T on this case? I was just following this individual. We can do the exact same um, for any of the others. So individual 2 has an AA genotype. It would just mean it has haplotype eight oh, twice. Um, and so it would be eight and then eight again. <clears throat> Any other questions? If not, let's see. Okay, and then that was ramp seek data. We will, okay, so converting between the different file types, uh, so join map and hat map, um, if we want to reformat, this would be an instance if we wanted to re reformat our SSR data um, from the join map format to the hat map format, it's pretty easy to do so. We just have to go and convert <coughs> these um, letter uh, codes into actual nucleotides. <clears throat> so it's pretty standard to work um, in the order of A, C, T, G. So instead of it being A, B, C, D, it would be A, C cross T, G. Um, and then we'll just drop off the T for three segregating alleles. So E, F, E, G would become A, C, A, G, um, whereas the A is the reoccurring nucleotide. Um, just like E is in this instance of the coding. HK, HK would become AC, AC. Um, LM, LL would become AC, AA. And NN and P would become AA, AC. And it's not essential uh, for the file to recode, at, recode it in this format. Um, I'm just using this as an example because that's what they did for the ramp seek data. Um, two segregating alleles is always just contain the A and C, um, I'm pretty sure. Whereas three alleles is always A, C, G, um, and T is only included if there's four segregating alleles. So, so basically, correct me if I'm wrong, okay? So SSR and uh, RAMC, you can use these five types, right? Mm -hmm. But for that, uh, what, the GPS only about the three. Yeah, the GBS is only the bottom three. But so, so if you if that's the case, you actually could put SSR, RAMSIG, and uh, GBS all together into one. Yeah, and that's what I did when I oh. combined the files. Um, I just recoded the join map format into this format because that's essentially what they're doing when they do a pseudo VCF with the RAMP seq data. They're just recoding it into a letter format. And that's exactly the same as what we did. Um, but if that's the case, I mean, you're going to delete a lot of uh, 
Local markers, right? And we combine them together. No. Yeah, no. Why? I guess so, why would markers get deleted in your mind? I mean, the number wise for the map. You think what of individuals? Right. Um, it would just be some individuals would get deleted, yes, if in one of the formats um, the individual wasn't genotyped. So I think I think GBS maybe has our least um, number of individuals, either that or ramp seek. I'm not 100 percent sure, but for the most part, I think it's some of our later genotypes that don't always have phenotyping done for them. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think, uh, which I haven't done the combined file very often, but I don't think I've seen issues with our numbers getting too low for individuals when we combine all three. So, so right now, for say like uh, GBS and SSR, we have the map is around 2000, right? Yeah. And then for uh, for RAMSIG, it's about also 2000. Uh, it's like 2000 is how many primers were designed. We have about 1500 uh, markers for our population. Okay. So then when you combine them together, what's the number you expect three of them will combine together for marker numbers yeah um i think when i was going through and doing the map which each time you add another marker type some of the markers don't match the segregation quite as well so we won't preserve those numbers exactly okay. in like a final map of the three combined i'm trying to think um what the numbers is. Even, even with the LetMap software, if you get too many markers, you start to run into like computational, like hardware bottlenecks. So it takes a long time to run more than like 5,000 or 6,000 markers okay. in a map. Um, but I would expect you probably around 4,000 you could maybe get um, with all three, all three file types maybe. Okay. I'd say three or four thousand. So that time you come, it's, a, it's a different region. I know, but that time you come, by the way, we have roughly 26. Yeah, but 26 plus 1500, so that's 31. 21. Yeah, uh, plus 400. So it, it, it's not that much more than four thousand to start with, and mar markers will drop out just because um, they're just because they're different. Um, hey, so in this case, what do you think? I mean, still SSR with the GBS and one, and then run six independently. Um, I think I think it's good to compare them separately um, right. because ramp seek data orders very nicely. Like it is very easy to make a good map with ramp seek markers. Um, and I would say running that, you don't always get as high of LOD scores when you run QTL stuff with uh, ramp seek, but I'm always pretty confident in like physical positions and stuff. Uh, okay. So I think it's a good like reference um, to compare against GBS. GBS doesn't always order along the physical positions as nicely as RAMSEQ does. Um, okay, let's see what time is it. Um, I think, yeah. yeah, the next stuff next week, we'll just be talking, we'll get into some of the file manipulation stuff. I'll be talking about how to do that in Excel and how to do it in um, Castle. Hey, see, see, so, so, so I have a question. You guys also just think about it. Or say like uh, SNPs, GBS SNPs, originally each population we got about 50,000 markers, right? Mm -hmm. And then when we narrow down to map construction, so 50 versus uh, only 2,000, right? Mm -hmm. so, so where the discrepancies come from? From 50 to 2,000 you could use. Do you want me to answer that? No. No, okay. Everybody thinking about it. Why is that? Because the raw data from one 
population easily more than 50,000 models. And then why all of a sudden go down to the map? We only have 2,000. It's really acting on the map. Can go, not all 50,000 occur in each progeny? And or some of the, uh, or maybe the, the so percent. They, come from, they, come from they, they, they come from the same population. So 50,000? Yeah, SNP calling is different across all the different populations. So when you like call a SNP, it's just basically looking at um, versus your like reference where there's differences. So there's always heterozygotes occurring at a SNP position in our population in a GBS file. So why all the all, all the way down to informative ones is only about two thousand on the map? Actually, I don't know the answer. Oh, well, I, I I can give you a pretty yeah, good answer. Yeah, I don't know the things. answer, but I have this. Okay, question. so first of all, we have issues with genotyping. So the low sequencing depths of GBS are like the number one issue as far as missed genotypes. Um, additionally, you have um, distorted segregation in the progeny. Those two things in combination with missing genotypes in individuals is all stuff that gets sorted out in tassel. Um, and so that takes the number of SNPs from like 50,000 down to like, I don't know, maybe like seven, 7,000 um, just with some of that stuff. So um, I understand the sequencing depth and, and errors, but when you say distorted, Segregation. Distorted segregation, like that would so. Be opposite of non-informative, I mean, opposite of informative, or, or no? Not? It just means that so at a marker that would be say our LMLL segregation type. So it's just segregating in Norton. Um, based on Mendelian segregation, we would expect that seventy-five percent, or I guess we could okay, actually. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I got. So you know, you're like Punnett squares. You have LM. LL, and you expect 50% to be LL and 50% to be LM. Um, and so count the alleles. Um, and when I talk about allele percentages, I'm just talking about, okay, so we have eight different alleles in these four individuals. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six out of eight are L, um, and two out of eight RM. Um, and so that would be 75% um, is our L, so that's our major allele. And 25% is M, so that's our minor allele. That's the expected. That's our expected. And so when these numbers deviate from this uh, percentages by a lot, that's when we get to have issues. And so what I was talking about, I find it acceptable for like this type of segregating marker to go up to like 85% for this L and down to like 65% for this L. Okay. Do you set those parameters when you set the distorted markers or is that something already in the, uh, This is stuff that you can do in filtering. Steps. So if we yeah. wanted 80 and six, uh, 70, yeah. we would set those. Parameter. Yeah, we would set those stuff. Like the this uh, distortion one for the joint map. Then they, you know, if you're looking for the chi square in the map, how uh, we go. This one, if you may see like a uh, case of, right? You able to see the ratio in the top. But for the joint map, yeah, sure oh, all open square. tassel on the. Yeah, case of, you should be able to see the number, right? Yeah, Tesla, you can see the numbers. You think about this kind of question. Yeah, then she could go into detail. What's going on? Otherwise, you just go through. But really, I don't know much of this at all. But I mean, she did a good job. Actually, I could catch something. OK, so like what I was talking about, this, these, this header along here, it can change. So you can change it to the quote unquote low side, which is just the chromosome. Could you, um, next week, could you explore the more I think a, um, Yeah, this is this is what we'll be getting into next week. I was just going to show you guys. Go to field all the data. 
It's Congo. Could you uh, we'll go to the detail next week? Yeah, we'll go, we'll go through this. I was just going to show. Yeah, that's good. These are better notice in Sayah. Yeah, I think I did on that part. I'm going to have a good comment of me. Well, otherwise, your dissertation. Yeah. No, your dissertation will be It's part of you. It's part of you next week. And I think uh, Jake is going to be quite a bit yeah. attentive. Yeah. But just at the top here, if you click on alleles, yeah. we'll get the actual percentages, uh, which I think this so is a combined a combined file. So like this one that has four alleles is actually an SSR marker. So disregard that. Um, but it's otherwise, this is, is there any YouTube describe all this? Um, some of the basic filtering stuff, but usually people I, I do some more complex filtering, which is sometimes necessary, sometimes not necessary, but it's just kind of all inferred from this stuff. It's more just going through the menu. Yeah, which we'll get into Tassel more next week, but that should be the basic stuff. So then, then from 50,000 down to 7,000, then what? Um, <laughs> then just to decrease the number to make it more manageable in LUT map, I do some of the like more quote unquote like fancier filtering. Um, I can crank, if you really need to get rid of markers, um, you can crank up the percentage missing that's acceptable. So say if there's more than like 5% missing, you could set that as your threshold and that would get rid of more markers. Um, but you could just put the 7,000 markers into, um, what's it called, let map. Um, and then some of the markers won't, um, won't sort into groups correctly just because they don't match. Um, sometimes you'll have to like get rid of markers because they'll prevent the two parent. Cause like, again, this is more complex stuff like GBS markers, since there's not a lot of multi-allelic um, sites, they don't like, like sometimes the Cabernet Sauvignon informative alleles will not integrate with like the Norton segregating alleles. And so you'll have like a V where it's like Cabernet Sauvignon uh, SNPs, Norton SNPs. Um, and sometimes there's certain markers that are like causing that and you can like delete them out. And sometimes stuff doesn't order to their physical position well. And so you'll delete that out. Um, and it just also a lot of times it's easier to handle like 2000 markers. So you might just like filter so, them more. So, so the lab map also has a capacity. Yeah, LetMap let map can ask, actually do some of the filtering that Tassel does. Um, it has those commands. I, it's just harder in LetMap because you can't really like see what you're doing. Um, and so I don't do filtering in LetMap. And I don't think, I'm trying to think, I don't remember exactly what population type LetMap was designed for, but there's a few things that doesn't like handle our data well as far as like filtering and like QC stuff, which is why I've kind of avoided using LetMap for that purpose. I don't know if she has a question or you already saw that. It was in chat. Chat. Oh, I did not see that. Oh, uh, okay. that was just. I just yeah. saw the one. Okay. So I and what the similar question well here, the Ramsey. Well, again, this is the whole genome sleeps, right? How come we end up still at 1,500 or? That's because they only designed, they only designed 2,000 markers. Um, and so between loci that are all homozygous for our population and like maybe some genotyping issues and some things like that, it, are they are they still working? Easy. Is the grant still working on developing more marker and Ramsey markers? I don't think they're intending to make more See, markers. Well, again, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, I saw the two thousand markers because they compare five populations, right? Mm -hmm. Is that five? Uh, okay. I think it's nine different nine? genome assemblies. Nine. So, so then what you do because this one, the basic idea for Ramsey is to improve the transmobility between populations. Mm -hmm. So they compare nine population, 
right? So then you can mix circles. So whatever the circle is all nigh in there. Yeah. Those the button Which let me. Am I right? Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, this this is a this is a common sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So if we go back to like the ramp seat die. stuff, um, they chose these regions first because they have some polymorphism or well, right. second because they have some polymorphism first because there are like primer um the primer codes are conserved across all of all of the genomes which makes it really easy to like amplify and then sequence these um so kind of first step have a conserved primer second step shows all of the um in the paper that shows all of the different like populations that were considered uh this is your end note yeah my this is your end note wow what is it you have three yeah oh damn i spent a lot of money here whoa let's see can this is this getting shared i think so this, this program is free yeah Wow. Download it. Okay, this is what you were talking about, about like Venn diagrams. <laughs> see, that's what uh, I'm talking about. See that? You guys need to read the paper. And I think, let's see. Okay, these are like physical positions across the various populations that they looked at. There's a better, I think. Let's see. Maybe it was up further. Here, okay. So these in A, of this Estevanus? figure, it's not, I don't think Estevalis is in there, but Chamberson is in there and Jaeger 70 is in there, which is two of our well, populations. Uh, they got a sequence from us. Yeah. But also, I don't know why it's getting more happy because Let me see, it's simplified illustration of the. So no I think, yeah, Estevalis is in here through Jaeger 70, which is, I'm assuming, why they. I think they have their own wired Estevalis. That's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. it's, they, they, they don't use Norton because Norton is never represented enough for the Estevalis. Yeah. Um, that's the key. Never. So hopefully, I mean, through. Uh, Carly's explanation, you guys should be able to read through the whole paper. That's the purpose, okay? Because right now we were just lucky, it's great. One for sniffs, for three months, it's very difficult. But, but past the 10 years, finally we have EBS. Actually, that was uh, adapted from corn mm -hmm. originally, right? And then during this GBS, process for the market development. Accidentally, they thought ramp sick might be better. Originally, it's not ramp sick it's, it's, yeah. it's only m sick right? And then after that, they said, wait a second, there's a company in Iowa City, Iowa, mm -hmm. where it lives. Boom, that was it. I think it's IDT. Right, IDT. So, so actually, IDT used the USDA is uh, how you put the vitamin D too. Mm -hmm. This is like the pilot, right? So, so they two just work together for both purposes. Okay, so that's the beauty for the whole thing. And Chen Zhou, well, she's a uh, actually faculty member from China, the Chinese Academy. She didn't like it. 
She got a PhD from U.S. She got a really good job back into China, but she didn't like it. She quit the job. She was a system professor doing very nice work. She quit her job, joined by the team too, starting from a postdoc. Okay, and then luckily we have this paper come up. If she is not here, I don't think this 